Welcome to Zen with Fabian. I'm Fabian and this video serves as a beginner's guide on how to sit properly with the spine erect, how to regulate your breath and what to do when certain parts of the body ache or interfere during Zen meditation. So rather than a guide on how to meditate, this is more about your posture that will allow your meditation practice to deepen. So have fun with all of this. As always, don't push yourself too hard and accept the current limitations of your bodily conditions. I promise you will notice the progress in due time and you will be grateful for the impact it will have not only on your practice, but also in your daily life. So without further ado, let's get to it. When it comes to your meditation setting, let the senses be receptive to whatever surrounds you during Zazen. Do not shut yourself off for it will take effort and distract you from your mode of concentration. Just as letting the thoughts pass by as opposed to repressing them, allow the sensations of your surroundings to come in and pass right through you. Of course, a quiet room is beneficial at the beginning though various settings and conditions are essential in further deepening and strengthening your Zen practice. This will make it independent of surrounding conditions and therefore independent of excuses. To be receptive also means to wear clothing that does not limit you in any way, such as tight pants or stiff and heavy material. Early in the morning, just before breakfast, tends to be the most beneficial time for Zazen, for the mind is still relatively quiet. The time just before going to bed provides another excellent condition to sit for a few minutes. This will also increase the quality of your sleep. The reason for sitting in Zazen is that thoughts are not steered into activity by physical movement and the mind is more easily quieted when the body is immobile. There are several sitting postures commonly applied in Zazen. The most famous being cross-legged in either full or half lotus, the Burmese position, or the traditional Japanese way of sitting called Seiza, sitting on the heels, on either a cushion or a Zen bench. Whatever posture suits best for your meditation practice, Make sure the ground is padded by either a folded blanket like I use or a so-called sabouton or a thick carpet. For us Westerners not used to sit cross-legged, both full and half lotus pose a seemingly insurmountable challenge. In full lotus, the right foot is placed on the left thigh and the left foot is placed on the right thigh or vice versa. In half lotus, either one foot is placed on the opposite thigh, while the other foot remains on the ground. Even I, after many years of yoga and zazen, am not able to sit in either position. But there are great videos on YouTube that illustrate how to stretch your legs to eventually make it into full or half lotus. I will link some of them in the description below. The strongest base is typically provided by the lower body forming a tripod, with the knees firmly on the ground and the buttocks supported by a sitting cushion. I typically sit in Burmese position with either the right or the left foot in front of the other. Instead of a sitting cushion, you may also use a yoga block where you can adjust the height accordingly or whatever you find in your household, such as a massage roll. If one of the knees doesn't quite make it to the ground, use a folded blanket or towel to give it a little bit of support like so. For practitioners not used to sit cross-legged, Seiza or the traditional way of sitting in Japan is a good alternative. For shorter periods of time, say five to 10 minutes, you may be able to sit on your heels. For longer sitting sessions, insert a cushion between your legs while keeping the knees in line and adjust the height as much as needed. If neither of these postures are available to you, use a chair. Keep your feet flat on the ground and shoulder width apart. Sit on the forward part of the chair 
and use also a cushion to encourage the natural bend in your lower spine. In either position, tip the pelvis forward to allow the curve in your lower back to happen. From here, start swaying from side to side a couple of times, maybe five, six, seven times and gradually find your natural center of gravity. Typically in Zen, hands are kept in a Zen Mudra. You may know it also as the Cosmic Mudra or the Dhyana Mudra. Place one hand just below your navel, palm facing up and the other one on top of it. Bring the thumbs to touch slightly, barely touching, as if you could hold a butterfly without crushing it. Now there are still ongoing discussions whether to put the right hand on top or the left. I personally don't pay too much attention to that and simply go about it as it feels right. And sometimes the mudra feels off and then I simply switch hands. For me personally, it feels right and effortless to keep the hands suspended. If they rest on my lap or on a supporting cushion, I tend to use it as a base and start putting pressure on it by leaning forward. See for yourself what feels right for you and by all means follow your own intuition. Either way, keep the elbows relaxed and close to the body and let the arms hang loosely without forcing them back. This will happen automatically when the curve in the lower back is maintained and the sternum is lifted slightly. Your chin should be tucked in slightly, aligning your ears with the shoulders and the hips. Your nose is in line with the navel. This typically creates the perfect center of gravity, causing the least strain on your body during Sazen. If a tightness develops somewhere between your head and shoulders, this suggests that your energy is blocked somewhere high up in your body. To remedy this, let your shoulders hang effortlessly on your frame and take a deep breath in lifting your sternum and breathe out slowly. Repeat a few times if needed and eventually this will release the blocked energy in your shoulders. No effort should be taken to pull back the shoulders for this will create tension and eventually pain. They will align on their own accord when the sternum is lifted and the natural bend in your lower back is maintained. In Zen, the eyes are kept slightly open, lowered down at an angle of approximately 45 degrees. If the eyes are closed, one tends to drift off in thoughts or into a dreamy state. Now, this will require some concentration, but keep your eyes unfocused. If you place your awareness onto your breath and into your hara, your eyes will unfocus automatically after time. Imagine you're looking beyond the tip of your nose and try to focus onto the point midway between your nose and the floor. And this might help in the beginning to unfocus your eyes. In Zazen, keep the mouth closed, the jaw relaxed and let the tongue touch the upper palate, just behind the front teeth. If your mouth fills up with saliva and you have to swallow frequently, Make sure your head is pressed back so you can feel the color with the back of your neck and keep the tongue at the upper palate. In Zen, breathing happens from the lower abdomen, not from the chest. When you inhale, the lower abdomen expands. When you exhale, it contracts. At the beginning, this may take some conscious effort since usually we breathe from the throat or from the chest. Picture a balloon in the palm of your hands, which you are inflating as you inhale and deflates as you exhale. This will also bring the center of gravity down to your hara, the point below your navel. This abdominal breathing will also loosen all your tension you might hold in your upper body, chest and shoulders. There are several modes of concentration in Zazen. 
depending on your progress of sharpening the mind. The easiest for beginners is counting the breath. So start with counting every inhalation and exhalation from 1 to 10. So 1 on the inhale, 2 exhale, 3 inhale, and 4 exhale. If you lose the count, return to 1. The next is to count only on the exhalation, so that one full breath counts as one. So inhale, exhale one. Inhale, exhale two. And this is the mode I am currently applying. A bit more difficult is to count on every inhalation. For most physical and mental activities performed, while one exhales. So inhale one, exhale. Inhale two, exhale. Again from one to ten, and if you lose the count, return to one. A further step is to follow your breath with the mind's eye only. And this brings me to a method for the advanced practitioner. It is called Shikantaza. Literally it means just sitting, but it's sometimes described as sitting in serene reflection. This is a heightened state of concentrated awareness. It is the mind of somebody facing death, if you will. And this state cannot be maintained for long. In fact, one should not do Shikantasa for more than 30 minutes. Some Zen masters apply a koan to their students. A koan is a question, a statement, or simply a word that cannot be understood or grasped by the intellect. It provokes the whole being of a practitioner and allows the Zen master to test the student's progress in Zazen. Examples of koans are the word mu, the question, what does your face look like before your parents were born? Or, what is the sound of one hand clapping? And koan zazen is typically practiced under the supervision of a Zen master. Practicing zazen daily will result in a decluttering of the mind. After time, thoughts are less likely to interfere with your Zen practice. At the beginning, however, as you start to separate from compulsive thought patterns, you might hear them more clearly. But try not to stop thinking, for this is an impossible task. Instead, take notice that thoughts arise, and from a distance, watch how they pass by. Once you've created a gap between you and your thoughts, return to your mode of concentration, say, counting the breath. Notice also whether your eyes are closed or your posture has weakened in any way, for these are signs that you have drifted off in thoughts. If you practice Sanzen in the early hours of the day, you may be dozing off at times. So am I. There are plenty of exercises to awaken the body. Instead of assuming the sitting posture right out of bed, take a brisk walk outdoors and fill your lungs with clear morning air. Stretching exercises are another great way to drive the sleep out of your bones and joints. Additionally, tap the head lightly with your fingertips for a minute or so. This is a well-known exercise from Qigong. Another option is to fill the sink with cold water to dip the face into. Open and shut the eyes for as long as you can hold your breath and let the eyeballs get in touch with the cold water. Oftentimes, dozing off is not related to the time of the day or whether you are tired or not. Let's be honest, the problem is one of motivation. The need for meditation is not yet strongly felt and dozing off indicates that you want to escape from the tedium of Sazen. Remember, consistency is of value when it comes to sharpening your mind and spiritual emancipation. I hope these instructions are of help to yours and practice. I know there is much more to cover, but at this point I like to keep it simple. Try not to become preoccupied with the mechanics of Sazen. 
It is most important that you follow your mode of concentration with the mind's eye only. Techniques belong to the world of technology and not to spiritual training. On this channel, you will find me sitting along with you from five minutes all the way up to 50 minutes. So sit for as long as it feels right for you. And don't push yourself beyond the point where you constantly lose your concentration. Rather, try to sit consistently every day. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions on how to improve your meditation experience. So take your care for now and see you very soon.